Uh, hi everyone, I wanted to do a quick study of the largest shipping companies in the world. Um, so I got involved in a moving business and tried to uh, start a moving company. It was really tough work. And so I've always been interested in people that ship things. Um, we had a funny name for our company, we called it Zoom. And we were trying to do all kinds of moving. It was uh, at times hilarious and at time, and most of the time extremely difficult. Um, but I believe uh, from what I found out, uh, most of the world's shipping is done by containers and over the ocean. Um, so I just never have, I mean, I've looked at these statistics before, but I haven't graphed them. So I wanted to graph them and take a look um, at some of these. I was familiar with Maersk um, and uh, I wasn't really familiar with this Mediterranean shipping company, even though they're ginormous. Um, I was aware that there was a lot of shipping going on in the Mediterranean. Um, and I'll show you a map in a moment. Um, and in fact, let's just go straight to the map. I'll get them. So hi everyone, I'm back. So this website is unbelievably good. Um, these guys are just so nice. They provide a lot of this information totally for free. Uh, you can pay for it. Um, and it's just, I don't know how they got all this information, but it's unbelievable. There's an unbelievable number of ships here. And I, they probably say somewhere on this website how many ships they keep track of. But and this is, if you zoomed in into the details here, you'd see that there's just tons and tons of ships. Um, but on this side, um, I just opened this up and so you can see the ship type. So cargo is green and you can see most of the ships are green. Um, and then a pretty good percent, so I would say like 75% are probably cargo. Um, and don't quote me on these numbers. Um, and they might even have uh, different types of cargo vessels you can pick. Tankers. Um, let's just look at each one of these so you can kind of see. I'll try to take all these out, and uh, this is going to cause a little bit of problems on the uh, things. Um, so we're going to look at just cargo for a second here. So when it loads up, you'll see just cargo. So these are all the cargo ships in the world, and this does not explain anything in detail. There's a lot of them that dock. So this is primarily the ones that are deeper at sea, uh, right now. So that's that. Let's look at the uh, tanker population. So this is the ship track marker. So you can see essentially where ships are going and where they're not. Um, I can change the uh, luminosity of that, but let's just get into the tankers and kind of see where the tankers are. And uh, interestingly, uh, there's quite a lot of tankers around Africa, you'd notice. Um, and uh, I, I heard it's like a thousand, hundred thousand dollars, or maybe even two hundred thousand dollars just to go through the Suez Canal. And, you know, essentially, that's a lot of money. So uh, people do kind of calculate, uh, do some calculations on tankers. Um, and then we'll do passenger vessels just to see, okay, not a whole lot. Um, but uh, an interesting number of passenger vessels up here um, in Northern Europe, I would say. And then uh, kind of some nice little ones along uh, China and then uh, uh, whatnot. And I would say these are only like maybe one fifth of the total passenger vessels. Uh, not even. So I, I don't know the exact number. Don't quote me. So here's high speed craft. Now these are kind of funny. They got to, yeah, you can see a high speed craft right down here. I've actually been on one of these um, between um, Montevideo and uh, uh, what is it? Uh, <laughs> sorry, Buenos Aires. Um, and then tugboats. And actually the most important one, um, so these tugboats would tell you approximately where the ports are. Um, and I'll even show you the ports in a moment so you can see fishing vessels. Now this is super important for environmental and I've actually looked into this in detail and kind of try to track down like, okay, where are they overfishing? Where are they not overfishing? Um, and it's actually, I mean, right here, you can just see a ton of fishing boats and that might be overfishing. I mean, it definitely is, it's just obvious, right? Um, and then certainly maybe up in here, some overfishing too, right? So. Uh, Anyway, so uh, then let's just do pleasure craft. These would just be guys cruising around, maybe a lot of sailboats and some other things. Um, and let's see if we can actually get a layer, and I can show you the ports. So these are all the ports all around the world, um, which is super interesting to see. So, um, and then on this, I think I can actually do the. Uh, uh, this would be the opacity of this. So you can kind of see uh, where the ships are going and where they're not. So that's the actual ocean. And then you can kind of see the pathway. So we'll just keep the opacity pretty high here. Um, and then I'm going to add uh, as many boats as I possibly can 
on this, uh, where was it? Oh, up here probably, so vessel type. So, um, and uh, I'm just gonna add cargo, and we're gonna add these guys, passenger, tugs, everything. Of course, the fishing is really important. Pleasure craft, and that's gonna be it. So it's gonna load everything here. So uh, we're gonna go back to the uh, main graph now. So in terms of this, so I, I don't know what the numbers are exactly, right? So I'm just doing these numbers with you right now. Um, so a couple interesting details, right? So you can see that this is really trailing off and then right around here and on the log graph, we can even see better. So basically in terms of total numbers of, and this is called 20 foot equivalent unit. So these are like those, uh, you know, those big things that you see on the back of trucks, I think, um, basically one of those. And um, I think they're actually like usually 50 foot. So it's like two of these. You have to divide this by two to get the number of actual. Anyway, so I, I don't know anything about this. So I uh, just tried to uh, look at this. So, uh, but in general, um, you know, it looks like uh, this is really trailing off and this is pretty much everybody. Um, you could probably add to this based on the ways this trails off, you know, there's probably another 200, 300 or so companies in the world in addition to these top 30, right? Uh, in terms of anybody that's got, and this is only in the thousands and then you get down to, if you add two or 300 more companies in here. So if you look at this graph, you can kind of see there would be maybe another 25% in addition to this, I would say at least maybe even 30%. Um, considering uh, weird crafts, but it's primarily controlled by these guys, I would have to say. So don't quote me on any of these numbers. And also I am trying to invest in some of these. So there is some, uh, you know, I'm just giving a disclaimer on this. Um, but uh, in general, uh, I want to look into all these and see basically what was going on. Um, now, air cargo is a whole separate thing. And I want to just look at that really quick. So in terms of air cargo, um, now I, I I know that this is not totally true because there's they're missing Delta Airlines and some others uh, that I thought were interesting. But in terms of Federal Express and UPS, they are shipping a lot of stuff. So and then interestingly, you can see Qatar Airways here and Emirates. So basically, the Middle East is doing a heck of a lot of uh, air cargo and even. You know, this is where the Asian ones come in, Korea and uh, even uh, European and so on, and Turkish. So China Southern Airlines Air Cargo. So it just makes me wonder, um, this is 2019. So, I mean, with China Southern Airlines only doing this much, what's really going on? So it could be that a lot of that shipping is just being done by boats. So we're going to primarily focus on boats, and I would say this is missing a good another 25% of the rest of the uh, – to get the full circle here. So, but you can kind of see relatively speaking what's going on. So basically going back to containers and going back to this map. So there's just a ton here. Um, I'm gonna kind of try to zoom in so you can start to see what's going on. So it looks to me like most of the shipping is, is basically centered around a couple spots, right? So you basically have this area, um, which is Southeast Asia. I would not consider this China per se. Um, I would consider this primarily Southeast Asia. Um, and then there's basically this big block of European and then essentially uh, North American shipping, right? And it's surprising how much shipping is done on the East Coast relative to West Coast. I I don't know. I've heard a lecture from the guy that runs the uh, LA Port Authority and it sounds like that was the biggest port, but from this map doesn't look like that so uh i don't know um la's down here it looks like there's a lot of shipping there but honestly gulf of mexico east coast new york new jersey that kind of makes sense to me most of the population uh is actually on the east coast anyway so and there's certainly a lot here uh in the, the cove of africa and uh kind of down here by rio de janeiro and so on so uh, but uh, in general, I would say this is just a huge block of ships. So 
all the green again was cargo and red was basically oil tankers so there's a lot of oil tankers in addition to this but certainly not uh, the vast majority of it is actually looks like it's pretty similar but uh, simply more um, for cargo um, so I'm not sure where to go from here um, you know I, I basically wanted to just look into these top companies um, I was looking at some other companies um, but certainly let's start by looking at Maersk and see what we find uh, so right to start with let's just go through some basic numbers here so Maersk has 786 ships um, and then this a 20 foot so it's 4 million units and the average ship has about this I did see a just before we get into all the details this kind of tells you a different story of how shipping works so you can see here uh, that uh, so on on this list this shows that uh, Korea where was it uh, doesn't even show it here so uh, but we did see a lot of that shipping going out of Asia. So on this, uh, these are the largest. So this is the list of largest container ships in the world. So one of these, uh, and this is a picture of a 20-foot equivalent unit. Um, does 23,000 of these. And I, I, I want to just look at a picture of this guy. Um, I just cannot believe there's 23,000 on it, but we're going to look at a couple of these big, ginormous guys. These top three ones in the world. So they have a Panama flag, interestingly, and they're all South Korean. And if you're not familiar with South Korea, I'm, I'm not totally familiar with South Korea, but there's a little port called Busan, and I just want to show you where this is. So because these guys are so big, now this is South Korea right here. And essentially, they are building the biggest ships in the world, right? So it's just interesting just to see where they are on a map. Now, there's South Korea is basically divided up into Seoul, which I don't like at all. And then there's a little port down here called Busan. And you can see Busan, where are they heading? So if you zoom in here, we can even see more. Let's try to go. Let's just zoom in more. So this is the whole. There's actually a lot more ships than it shows. You see how all these new ships show up here. So it's just hard to see. And the other cool thing is you start to see how deep into China some of these boats, cargo ships are going. It's unbelievable that they can go this far into China. Um, I mean, you probably heard of famous Wuhan and all that. So that's basically going past Wuhan right here. And even further up this is a good thousand miles plus into China but we are talking about the largest in the world so let's just look at a quick pixel image of this and I don't know that that doesn't look like 23,000 but god I'm gonna load up a high resolution image of this it might take a little time to load it but so you can see a couple things about this ship um, it just looks ginormous and uh, but it, it actually doesn't look that, it actually, honestly, it doesn't look super, super big. But we could probably even estimate what this is. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 by 10 is 100. So that's like 100, uh, 100, 200, 3, 400. Yeah, maybe. So uh, that's like 500. Good 500 right there. 500 there, that's 1,000. And uh, 1,000, 2,000, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 18, and so on. Yeah, so it's probably about 23,000. So they're right. Um, uh, uh, yeah, so it's just a lot of uh, a lot of cargo there. Um, this is another image of this cargo ship, and God, that is just huge. And they both have this H... MM on the side and look at that beast my god um, but uh, you could go and take a look at these this just this page is just list of the largest container ships and I don't know I, I don't know if this is accurate I've seen some these are not the largest ships in the world but they're certainly by length there's some others that are larger and I've I, I don't know don't quote me on this I think this is 1,000 
So it's 1,300 feet long. And these are all exactly identical. Interesting, right? So, and they're actually identical with the uh, ship load. Maybe there's some kind of rule on uh, uh, the uh, how large you can make them. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, or even the 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 actual. At a certain point, is it is it just too? Could it just crack because it's so big? So uh, they do have some uh, details on each of these, but. Uh, not even sure what to say, but a really interesting picture. It might be interesting to see uh, where this picture was taken. Um, so you can see, uh, says in some other language here, we can't even really read, but uh, maybe uh, Rotterdam. So this is probably in uh, the Netherlands. So let's just look at that port just so you can see. So here, uh, this is the uh, South Korean spot. So let's go over to Rotterdam. And I'm going to take some time to zoom out here, and it's going to be slow. Sorry about this. Um, and so in Europe, the big the big ports, and most of the people live basically right about in a, in kind of a Amsterdam area. So Rotterdam is that port there, and we're going to try to see. So we're basically looking for a spot right in here. This is where Rotterdam is. And you can kind of see the meta so that, that that number two shipping company in the world is involved in the Mediterranean, and you can see that this area is gonna have a lot of boats. So we're gonna just keep zooming in. And we're trying to find Rotterdam port here. So uh, that picture was taken just out there, and, and probably it wasn't in the port. I'm a little bit familiar with Rotterdam. Um, but uh, we're zooming in on Netherlands, and you can see the cargo, these green guys just kind of this is actually a live image, believe it or not. Um, so it's really fun to work with if you, uh, and I'm not even sure if we're going to get, oh, there we are. See, so you can kind of see Rotterdam showing up here. So uh, so another interesting thing, so we're kind of looking at the pathways here and just all these ships coming in. So this pathway, this pathway, all, I'm trying not to press on any of the uh, um, individual ships, but you can start to see that Rotterdam is a huge huge port here and there's just a ton of ships in here right now my god that would be uh, pretty fun just to see maybe uh hang out here on this little uh cove and this hook they call it let's just zoom in and keep looking at these ships so quite a number of oil tankers these red ones are oil and i'm sorry it's taking a little while to load it's uh my internet's kind of fluky so we'll let that load um but uh, you can kind of see the, the the essence of what's going on here, and a lot of farmland coming out here, a lot of cows and stuff. I think even in this area, uh, I've seen. Um, but um, and there is another port um, in here. So that says Rotterdam, but essentially there it looks like they're all kind of going right in on this. Uh, this this part here so certainly a lot of shipping here but honestly that's not a whole lot so uh, i've seen other places and uh you know it's it, it looks like a lot but uh uh you just saw in china there was probably maybe three times that just in that uh, yellow uh, sea so but there's a lot of ships in general so let's go back to this list and see what else we can discover so it drops significantly. You can see from 700 to uh, Mediterranean Company is uh, down at 574. So, but interestingly, it doesn't necessarily drop. So they're using maybe a lot bigger ships now. Interestingly, you see Italy here and Switzerland. So Switzerland is a landlocked country, and how Switzerland got involved in this shipping company would be a very interesting story to research. And the number three in the world is a Chinese one named Costco. So. Uh, shipping lines and certainly we want to open up that and look at them in detail so and then i've seen these guys cma cgm group i didn't know they're french um but uh they are french i guess and uh you can see a german one here and then a japan and i would say uh japan would be pretty expected to see um you know i would i'm a little bit surprised that japan is uh you know, so let's do a graph on just by countries because it's kind of hard to know. Um, let me stop this for a second.
Uh, so this might just be a little easier to read, but honestly, it's maybe better to read on a chart. So you can see here Denmark, um, then Italy, I would say Switzerland, I'm kind of not convinced about, but uh, being landlocked. So, and then I would say of these, the interesting ones kind of start in here. So let's go look back at this chart. So basically Taiwan, right? So Germany is very unexpected, right? Um, with the with the except because there's not really a good port there. If you look at I forgot the name of that, yeah, Hamburg. So here you can see Hamburg. That's Hamburg in Germany, and it's just Germany. So it doesn't have very much water, um, but certainly in terms of shipping, they've uh, done a heck of a good job for being so not very much coastline and not even on the Mediterranean. So you'd expect Italy to be big and even Greece uh, I'm really surprised there's not a lot of Greece listed on here because many of the companies I try to invest in are from Greece um, but uh, maybe they're uh, actually kind of uh, Italian related who knows um, but you see Israel shows up here as a pretty big shipping area um, and Singapore I would say this would be a really big weakness because man I mean Singapore is just so centrally located and if we zoomed out, I'm going to zoom out a little bit more, see if we can show you Singapore on this. So the, the reason that Singapore is so vital here is it's almost like the uh, Suez Canal for this whole area. So essentially, if you want to get, if you want to get from uh, Asia, you know, to uh, anywhere else, you kind of got to pass through Singapore. So what they've been doing in Singapore a lot of the oil tankers stop here and they f refuel i'd imagine so on um, so here's singapore you can see that basically they got to go around this little edge here in singapore and certainly i don't know I, i'm so interested in all the shipping in this whole area it's just so exotic and interesting with the islands um but uh singapore so basically we should I just want to load up the Singapore company. Taiwan isn't super interesting to me, but uh, I like their name, Evergreen. Looks like they got two different. Uh, you add Taiwan here, so you add this one plus this one, and you get 30. You almost get, uh, that's like three. three th so they almost come in ahead of Germany. And that makes a lot of sense, uh, but uh, why Japan has so few is a very big concern, I would say, because really, uh, the better Japan shipping is, um, the better it is for all of Asia. Because, but at the same time, it's hard because there's a lot of you don't want to get a lot of pollution in the water. So, uh, anyway, uh, but uh, China also showing up here with another one. So. And you can see if you add this one, 100, 100, plus this one, that even brings them up basically to the number one in the world, right? Because they're at five, six, seven. And you add this guy and maybe add Hong Kong into this. And you basically get China being number one. So not, and even if you add Japan into here, uh, so you start to get this... Uh, Asian, uh, and if you started to compare that to Europe, you'd say, well, okay, add France and Germany. But you know, the the real map is just looking at this. So you know, it's it's uh, independent of what uh, Wikipedia says. I would say go off of uh, this live shipping map, um, and certainly it is centered around where most of the population of the world is in general. Like the shipping is in Asia. Um, so uh, we should expect that um, and uh, but just a lot of interesting and I would say Turkey would be another really interesting one to check out I'm looking as uh, and even Iran would be interesting as well just because they have some uh, tough times and uh, um, and then we did see for the air freight that uh, UAE was pretty high but then here for shipping they're actually quite low so that's another concern like you'd have to say so in the Middle East there is a lot of oil, uh, supposedly, um, but um, you see all this red stuff coming out of the uh, Middle East. Um, but um, so, so what I was saying about Turkey is that Turkey's right in here, um, and they would be very interesting to look at in detail as well. So, um, and again, you see another uh, Denmark and Hong Kong. 
and certainly China should consider um, I would like to see where their headquarters is here um, we can probably look real quick so they're in Shanghai right so yeah I mean that makes sense uh, but uh, I wouldn't want to live in Shanghai it's pretty getting bad in eastern China for pollution so uh, but uh, but in general uh, I'm familiar with a lot of these names um, but uh, we just wanted to kind of look at uh, a bunch of these so I'm not sure how much further we're gonna really dig into this right now might do another video on it or something um, but uh, just trying to spot anything else so the uh, the most important thing I would say would be looking at the fish lines too like just thinking about the natural environment um, and then just looking at the tracks um, so let's let's take off before we uh, give up on all this I'm gonna try to take off everything so this is just the track line so you know if, if we could see this on a bigger scale so you can kind of see that there's these track lines heading in here and this goes back to Singapore and it's just a lot of action going through here and then a lot of wouldn't want to be on a sailboat right at this point there's just chaos in there but and then also just in around the tip of Africa a lot of stuff going on but this the the heat actually is quite a bit in here in the Mediterranean and you can see just a lot of stuff even this is kind of Egypt and remember Israel is pretty big there um, kind of heading up in the Arctic and this is kind of surprising to see so much shipping up there I mean relative to what you see here so um, it could be that they just track their shipping a little bit more but uh, and even some uh, boat lines into the Amazon this is scary as heck to see some uh, red traces back into there but um, but yeah, and then quite a bit of going all the way up into the here. Um, you can kind of see this was the uh, Yangtze River here. And not a whole lot going on in the uh, Nile River. And then these are the Volga River. This is the uh, big Russian River. Um, this heads out to Moscow, I believe. Yeah, so that's pretty impressive. And I'm not even sure what's going on here. So have to look at this so this in terms of inland shipping this would be russia's got quite the system here and comparing that to kind of the mississippi you can kind of see there's uh there's some shipping up there but this is kind of a weird would be interesting and even europe man what the heck holy cow so this is just going shipping all the way here out into uh, i think this is romania here so um but uh uh, but yeah, so, uh, you know, I mean, uh, I, personally, I'm, I'm really interested in the future for uh, economics for South America and uh, Africa. So it's, it would be interesting to see, you know, I, I'm always, I'm just really surprised that, um, you know, you kind of need bays and nice little, like, that, that's what makes the Mediterranean so great. So it's got this huge bay, first of all, from protected from the ocean, but at this point, they're going to be big waves anyway. So that kind of means that in terms of bays, you kind of get uh, here like in, and then in Japan and areas to think. So let's, let's add the ports as a last little uh, check. And, um, and you can kind of see, I mean, it's basically all along the coast here, but, uh, uh, but certainly, um, Certainly, uh, you know, it's just, it would be hard to, uh, like, if we, I just wanted to go look at these, it, it, we'd have to look at this in great detail. So there's just so much that we'd have to check. So, for example, here in London, Liverpool, like, I, I know about Liverpool, and it just there's better sailing up. It's a nice little cove up there. London is not a place to sail into anymore by any means. So, uh, and, uh, and same here so it's like the coastline is just tough but maybe here in Mumbai there's still some shipping but in terms of South America which I was trying to discuss is uh you know I mean it's it's uh it's hard I, I would say that the, the the coastline which I've studied here it's got a cove for Rio and uh you know but really I would say probably Chile is where that shipping is uh bus for ports and stuff and just being able to uh, dock your boat and certainly the caribbean so uh 
basically what this suggests is that uh, most of the boating is kind of going to be in through here for this is I'm talking like leisure boating in addition to uh, stuff but it just gets very hot along the equator so it's not my deal um, perhaps the best shipping port in America is going to be right up here in Seattle um, just with uh, Puget Sound um, some people would argue with that, me, but I, I do not like the Delaware Bay at all here on the East Coast. You can see this Delaware kind of pulls in here and just it's nothing compared to uh, Seattle's port. That's a nice port. And same with San Francisco. San Francisco Bay is pretty good, but it's, from what I understand, I think it's pretty shallow in San Francisco and uh, might make it difficult uh, to... Uh, ship there but it's certainly a lot better than LA I, I don't understand why LA is such a big port but you can kind of see uh, Los Angeles these ports are just get way back in there and that's really nice to have and, and of course once you get a port here you can ship food and everything else from the Central Valley California um, but uh, uh, if we go over to Africa really quick um, the reason I would want to study Africa is basically because it's going to be growing by 10 or 100 times, um, and the shipping would be a big part of that. So basically what that all means is, is it kind of comes down to Nigeria. Most of the population growth is in here on the western part of Africa, um, and uh, there I have some friends that live in Uganda and stuff, but you can see there's not, doesn't even show a port here. But, um, in Kampala, interesting. So they need a port in Kampala, dude. What's going on with this? Either the map is way wrong or uh, maybe there's no port in Kampala. Unbelievable. So there's not a shipping port in Kampala. Big money right there, guys, to uh, put a port in uh, Kampala. Um, and from what I understand, a lot of that shipping comes from uh, Kenya, and there's a railroad that the British put in that heads up into uh, Kampala. But... Uh, on the southern tip here, it looks like this is like the last hope. I mean, once you make it to uh, Cape Town, uh, you got a big trip across the Atlantic um, with no... I mean, you could probably legitimately... And from what I understand, this is pretty dangerous sailing across the Indian Ocean here. Um, you'd have to look at the... Uh, it's trying to have me uh, log in for some reason, but uh, but yeah, and, and and for sure I'm interested in the Arctic and stuff. So it's just little ports like this really mean a lot, like here on uh, this island and uh, some of these weird ones out in the middle. But Africa, you know, it, it just surprises me. So you know, in terms of like a little boating area, it really comes down comes down to Madagascar. And then you can kind of see these small little islands, and there's kind of some small islands off the coast of Africa here. But uh, West Africa being, I mean, it's kind of sucks when you have to just sail out into the ocean. There's nothing there. It really helps to have some small islands. So a lot of that maybe means northern Africa. And it's just the ports here. Tunisia is a pretty small port, and uh, Egypt doesn't really have much. It's just that really saw it really really makes Africa tough place for shipping which is just the fact of the matter um but i could be totally wrong there's there's certain spots in here i think um and we can kind of look at the tracks we should just look at the tracks rather than guessing but uh but basically south africa is the key so i would say in terms of a real pit stop it almost becomes a a good place to just um sell gas for uh, ships um and uh, for that matter i mean it's just there's nothing on this side and nothing on this side and uh, it's a nice nice town Saffles. cape town uh so if you have to dock um it's pretty good and and i think it's surprising how great uh some of the uh, gulf area is along here and that's really what's happened is these are great little towns to dock boats and it's it just a whole see where it's it's not as dangerous as being out on the ocean and you can find ports and stuff and it makes for great shipping environment in uh the middle east so the middle east is very fortunate and perhaps this is a good area for africa to focus on in terms of uh purely african and middle eastern portage so 
uh, from what I understand, there's a lot of problems in Sudan, and maybe Sudan can really work on the shipping. Um, and that really helps a lot of Central Africa because of uh, poverty in the desert and things. So when Sudan figures some things out, it can really help. And uh, I think a lot of that was part of the problem is the food. So there's not a lot of food, but since they have a port here, it may be possible for me to look into some of that at some point. But in general, um, if you've seen Lagos, let's just zoom in on Lagos because it's um, there's a lot of ports here. And uh, I would say some of the secret little – there is there is a lot of little inlets in here. And I'm not, not sure what the names of the cities are, but uh, you can see there's just a ton of little ports here and a ton of little ports here. So – that is the Congo, and I love the jungle. I think it's very interesting and great, um, but I think you should stay on the outside of the jungle. I don't think you should go into the jungle, but uh, there is uh, some friends I have in Cameroon, and these these ports, it's just, it's just hard to see. So you can see Lagos, and it's just, I don't know what's going on. Why do they have all these ports out in the middle of the water? So I think in, like, in places like Hong Kong, they've been making ports... There may be little islands or something. Um, but this is taking a little while to load. Sorry about this. But you can see Lagos. And surprisingly, it looks like most of the shipping going into this this location, which is actually where the river kind of ends. So anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry if this is uh, not exactly what you're looking for. But, um, but Africa, to, to put this in fair terms, like... Africa and South America really only have, you know, 5% of the total wealth on the planet. So a lot of things are going to change in Africa and South America. And it's just important to look at the shipping situation in these countries, although they're not maybe what most people would think. So even this area, this is like a massive, I didn't even notice this part of Africa. Jeez. So this is a huge, so that's all Libya. So even Libya can really be useful in terms of shipping, but there's just nowhere you're gonna go um, if you're uh, if you need uh, food and grass and water. But uh, uh, but on terms of the India, so it, like that's one side in terms of growth. So in terms of uh, you know obviously there's gonna be a lot of growth in South America and a lot of growth in Africa, and just looking at the map, I'd probably say more better growth in uh, South America, but in some senses, there's a lot of nice land in here in West Africa, and I don't want people to be in the jungle, but anyway, so, uh, and then even in India and China, so most of the population in India and China is like up in here, and I really wish I could get this shipping map. Um, let me see if I can get a GeoTIFF shipping map. Okay, so I did look a little bit uh, for GeoTIFF and I couldn't find anything um, that uh, is uh, easy to find and adequate for what I'm trying to do. So it'd be nice just to get it on so I could see the population overlay with this for India and so on. So, But uh, you can see that um, certainly a lot of the Middle Eastern shipping goes out through here and maybe even stops over in Mumbai or just heads through here over to Europe. So... Uh, but uh, and then there's kind of this port here, so this would be Jakarta, uh, and then certainly this. I'm not even sure if this is heading up to Australia and then around to Perth and then up through Sydney, but just a lot of really interesting stuff going on here. So, uh, certainly, um, and then off of the tip, so this would be like Portugal here to compare with, but uh. But anyway, so let's just conclude. I'm not going to look into all the details of each company, um, but uh, but I definitely suggest uh, taking a look at this marinetraffic.com, and you'd have to mess around with it a little bit to get it look this good, but you're going to just click on these things on the side to get this kind of stuff. So, But, uh, but yeah, um, just very interesting um, to see. Um, you know all the shipping going on here in the world and i'm i am a little bit surprised um you know obviously uh this suggests that europe alone is perhaps a good 50 percent if you take denmark switzerland italy and france and germany so 
it's a good 50% of all the shipping. And, you know, the reason is, is essentially because of all the coves. So there's just so many little islands. It was originally great for shipping in the Mediterranean, just all these areas. So I would say, though, that in the future, let's expect a lot of shipping coming from, uh, you know, Southeast Asia, all these islands here. And then also in, in America, you can say there's going to be a lot of shipping maybe on this uh, Caribbean area. So these are the numbers right now, but um, what will it be? And you don't see anything from uh, Caribbean. So, you know, certainly a good possibility to work on. I've seen some of these larger companies headquartered out in the middle of the ocean, like Bermuda. They just headquarter them themselves. And certainly when you live right on the water, um, you get to experience the water and you know a lot more in these islands. Certainly you think about boats a lot more. So um, Europe, it's kind of uh, population centric along uh, this area, which is basically Denmark. So the data showing uh, that Denmark is number one in Italy. So certainly I, I wouldn't believe everything here, but uh, Italy's right down here, right? and. That makes a lot of sense being in the center of the Mediterranean and their biggest one for uh, number two basically in the world. So, uh, and uh, China, I, I, I don't really like what's going on in Eastern China. So that was this bay here. And uh, certainly I would prefer, there's so much pollution if you look at a cloud map coming out of China. And, you know, basically, uh japan should be where the shipping is centered if it's gonna come from asia or even south korea and you kind of do see that japan here right and taiwan and south korea so that being right there a good almost 25 percent of the global shipping market is this is 25 percent right here right so but the question still becomes why nothing in you know like essentially is it because there's no ports uh there's just never been shipping what about railroads maybe but uh i don't know so japan i've tried to invest in some railroad companies but uh you know it's just africa i think africa probably has more hope for shipping than uh, south america just because it's so close to europe and so close to the middle east and you pretty much got to get around it to get over this way or that way and uh so maybe africa in terms of just um helping to control and regulate particularly with South Africa, it would be interesting to look at. So you notice nothing really here on Africa, right? Even Iran shows up, but where's the sliver for Africa? So, uh, but on this list, if you want to get this, you can do the list of largest container shipping companies and get all this data. So, um, and uh, nothing here, but Turkey's probably the closest thing to Africa that we can, Italy's close to Africa too, but, uh, uh, but in terms of culture, um, yeah, so basically these guys would be interesting to discuss with uh, some ideas in terms of how to help Africa, particularly we talked about uh, along this coast here because there's a lot of poverty and maybe they can uh, have some better better shipping um, just helping. And I think that's partly maybe the Suez Canal, like what are they doing? What is Egypt really doing to uh, promote shipping uh, all throughout Africa? Um and uh, maybe they should work with Sudan and some other places. But uh, uh, from what I understand, they have even tried to talk about blocking up the Nile, and that's been causing a lot of political concern because if Sudan gets the water backed up, then what's going to happen to the Nile? So it's a very big concern um, with stuff like that. So, uh, And uh, in general, I think Europe is still really stable for shipping. There's a lot of great places to sail and uh, – ship um i mean it's just nothing like the east coast this is you head out of the atlantic there's nothing there you have to pretty much go down the caribbean and that does make it nice because then you can sail down to the caribbean and i think it's about a month or so to get down to the caribbean from say new york maybe a couple weeks um by sailing um but uh you know it's just the mediterranean is lovely you can kind of cruise all around here and just sail almost forever all into interesting areas and this is kind of complicated because you have to, it really makes Singapore a central point because it would be kind of frightening to get, this is a good uh, hundred, couple hundred miles. So you can do it. You can go to Taiwan and then head to the Philippines and kind of once you're in the Philippines, you can do the shortcut. But this is kind of a leap of hope. And uh, certainly I would wonder about the weather conditions in here as well. 
it might be just and uh, the part of the problem is it just gets to be dangerous in here i don't know about the pirates and all that kind of stuff and things but uh so it just it's it is really complex but i think if you're in this area you can kind of already in the philippines or already in indonesia you can kind of sort some things out but uh anyway so yeah globally everything looks pretty interesting and uh let me know what you think i'd love to hear your ideas on uh things that i've missed if there's certain areas that you think are uh wow asher this is really interesting for example brisbane or we looked we haven't even looked at uh new zealand here and uh just different uh details that uh would be interesting to look at on terms of the global shipping map um, or even uh, money that's being made or companies that you think are interesting to invest in. I was going to go more into the companies, but I decided to look at the global situation first before I dived into all the details of specific companies. But uh, certainly that is worthwhile because that's where you can perhaps make some money. Um, shipping is very dangerous. Uh, it's been going down for many, many years, um, unfortunately. And uh, yeah, so basically, uh, yeah, I hope you're doing great, and uh, let me know what you think. See you.